Thanks for tuning into the Texas Scratch King channel. In this video, you will hear about the Abattoirs champion Molly Me. Let us begin. It was the end of the year and we were having our annual breaking up. Dog talk and meat was on the menu for the day. It was usually only attended by dog men from our area and friends from another area. But this time around, RB invited W. Let's call him Mr. Goldie from Mole to join in the festivities. Dog men being dog men, the day ended up with some roles to end off the year. So I became acquainted with Mr. Goldie and we ended becoming pen pals. In one letter Mr. Goldie asked me what females we currently have and at the time the only one I felt worth mentioning was Honey Girl which we purchased from Cree Kennels. We sent letters back and forth about her pedigree and how we ended up with her and at the time she had produced a son that beat a son of Tudor P.O.R. Imp at the age of one year seven months. She was bred spice to pinky one time game lose. Spice's pedigree is mainly made up of Bullis and slash Eli blood through imports from Bobby Hall. Pinky is a classic smart-ass yellow dog, which was matched very late in life, and ended up losing game, but breaking the stifle of Lisa R.O.M., Impa daughter of Frisco R.O.M., Mole had game dogs, and was on an impressive winning streak until Rock 1XW lost his second game. Into Caesar 1XW a son of champion Baki. Caesar later lost while traveling into grand champion Anderson the Spider Silva. Only thing Mole dogs lacked was a bit of mouth. And Mr. Goldie wanted to add some in and he figured Honey Girl would be able to do that based on her pedigree. Rock went on to become a two-time winner. One-time game lose. By beating a son of Sangre Imp. In a grueling three-hour plus treadmill race. Rock was contracted for his championship into black two-time winner. Who belonged to the same kennel that owned Caesar. I received a letter from Mr. Goldie asking if Honey is going in season soon. And asked if we are willing to do a mating. They wanted to do the mating before Rock's keep starts. Only problem was Honey was not close to being in season. I wrote back and told him that we have one in season. But she is young, and was never really checked out properly. He felt a two-time winner. Over the daughter of a two-time winner should be able to produce some winners. We agreed and we ended up taking the drive to them to breed Rock with Zola. Rock was bred Drillbit to Electra making him 1750th Grand Champion Gritler P.O.R. Dog of the Year, and one quarter Sangre R.O.M. Imp. His litter fared decent in the show arena. And his brother Yakuza. Also ended up going over the three hour mark. For his victory over a contender from the north. Zola was bred by Arnie 2XW to Satsi making her one half grand champion Gritler. And one eighth Riddick Imp 2XW one time lose ROM. Making the breeding a predominantly Gritler breeding. With a touch of Sangre Riddick. And Jasper P.O.R. Rock ended up with Billy Uri during his keep and died. Luckily for them Zola took and ended up being a very good mother raising six strong pups. Mole ended up picking two males and a female. The rest was left with Tick. He ended up selling the male which eventually ended up in our kennel again just to be given away as we were never going to show him. He was called Guinness. And ended up with the guy that was blessed with the female that was picked by Mole. The heart kid was back in town. And we all ended up visiting Tick. The two female pups were still on his yard. HBK ended up walking off with Tick to have a chat and when they came back Tick gave him the dog we know today as Molly. She was much smaller and very aloof acting and that must have been why she was given away. Molly ended up being raised by Locke. And he also took her through her schooling phases. Molly probably had 10 roles under her belt. And I ended up seeing most of them. The one thing that stuck out in all her roles was the fact that she always remained calm. And could never be put on the back foot. One of her roles was into a bigger male and not even he could get the jump on her. She would always end up on your head to check you out. Never chased always relaxed. One of her roles ended up at the place where she was bred. The home of Rock. Rock's owner let's call him Mr. Rock was initially rooting for the other guys. But quickly changed his tune when the two got going. She was on the head. And was unable to be touched. Mr. Rock was so impressed he asked if he could bring her out. But all of us just laughed it off. Heart Kid decided that she is ready and that her weight should be put out at 36.4 pounds. Her weight was picked up by BR and negotiations were on the way. Agreements were made and a start date selected. Before kickoff HBK declared that due to some personal reasons. He I won't be able to continue with the show. I had some personal reasons of my own that kept me from doing the keep too. I contacted TC as no forfeits were in place. And the start date was not upon us yet. I told them I would make a plan. I would just need a little time. I ended up contacting Mr. Rock and asked if his offer still stands. He was more than happy to do her and she was sent off. Unfortunately she didn't want to run the mill. And they ended doing a bicycle keep on her. 
Molly me versus Deathstroke. The show ended up in our neck of the woods. And both dogs took a short trip our way. We fetched the TC members at the agreed spot. And they informed us that Deathstroke did not take well to the traveling. They said she ended up vomiting. Deathstroke is Brett Cosby one-time winner and one-time lose to champion Miss Barracuda. We ended up meeting up with Mole. And they took Molly out of their car to take her for a walk. When she got out all of us were shocked when we saw Molly. She was very lean and seemed to be a bit lethargic. If we didn't know about Deathstrokey's car troubles we were probably going to pay the forfeit on the spot. Molly was second on a two-card show. First up were Males and BD's Travis was conditioned and handled by TC. Who had made one-time winner. Both of the females made weight. But both came in a pound light. Well I wasn't personally at the shows. Which were attributed to those personal reasons I mentioned earlier. Molly was handled by Locke as the two of them had the best bond. It was said that Molly did her usual thing and ended up on the head. Feeling her opponent had no strength she went on to punish her. She was hitting the legs and ending up in her brisket as well. Basically folding her up. Deathstroke wanted no part of this and the writing was on the wall. A turn is called on Deathstroke and handles are made. Deathstroke released and looks for a way out. But too many guys packed in the small venue and there is nowhere to jump. She gets counted out and Molly becomes a one-time winner in 34 minutes. After a few months the owner of Rock decides he wants to do her sister. Lala. She on the other hand wasn't as defensive as Molly but more of the attacking kind. Taking out shoulders like a gritler dog is supposed to and she appeared to have a decent mouth to boot. Arrangements were made and Lala was hooked. On the day she was supposed to be picked up. The fella informed Mr. Rock that he had sold her. This left Mr. Rock in a predicament as he was hooked. And had no dog to condition. He ended up reverting back to us and asked if they can borrow Molly for this show. It took some convincing on my part. But eventually Molly's owners were on board. We put her through a pre-keep and off she went. Molly won XW versus Lexi. Molly went through her normal paces and was conditioned with the use of a bicycle. This time around she looked much better as the weight was raised to 37.5 pounds. Can't recall the opponent's name at the time of writing. Let's call her Lexi. She was said to be a daughter of Ratex 1x game lose. But later they said she was a non-pedigree dog. Again Molly is second on a two-card show. On that night Cam Mason makes one-time winner. When we arrived at the venue that show was concluded. And the females could kick off. The venue was packed. And even some retired doggers came out of their holes. It seems they actually wanted Molly as they kept asking if she is a one-time winner. Both females make the weight. And Mr. Rock handles Molly this time around. And her opponent gets handled by Plum. Dogs are released. And Molly appears to be spooked. And doesn't leave her corner. Her opponent comes over smashing into her. For some or other reason her handler. And his second also seemed as if they needed a kick start. It takes the entire team a few minutes to settle in. Lexi being stronger coupled with the fact that Molly didn't want to start made Lexi the aggressor. Molly tried to ride her out on the ears. But she kept breaking through her defenses. It was then that Molly decided to change her game plan. This dog had to be slowed down as she is running the risk of being put away. She switches her game up. And moves from ear to the muzzle. Lexi is still pushing ahead and appears unable to be kept at bay. Molly then goes to her legs and ends up hitting a bad bleeder in Lexi's front leg. This definitely tipped things. Molly's way. But she ends up getting fanged. Fangs are called and suddenly there are no sticks available. Lexi's team says they will not provide theirs. As we had to bring our own. They were trying to win by any means necessary. Hammer was the man in the middle. And ends up using a card key to unfang her. Not long after that she somehow ends up getting her bottom hanger fanged in her chest. Which was a first. Meanwhile Mason's owner ends up leaving to fetch his sticks to accommodate us. After that it was basically all Molly. She stuck to her newfound ways and sat on the muzzle. When Molly came off her head the crowd collectively made an emphasized oh. It was an eerie sight to see. Lexi's head seemed mutilated. A turn was called on Lexi. And handles were made. To the surprise of everyone present she makes her scratch. Another handle not long after. And Molly comes over continuing her onslaught on a down dog. And starting to go for the throat. Sucking the life out of her. There's absolutely no comeback for Lexi at this point. And she is left down far too long. One of their members looking shocked asked another. How does one aftercare that? Quick handles made and Lexi looking like the elephant man needs to complete a scratch. Well who would have thought that she is not more than flesh and blood. She was left down too long. Did you really think she was going to make another scratch? She just laid there. Was she able to come I wasn't sure. 
but she gets counted out and called a cur. Making Molly a 2xw in 50 minutes. After the show Ga contacts me and asked why the show was over that quick. Quick I asked that show was over by the 30 minutes mark. Your guys just dragged it that long. Hammer also ends up contacting me and says he likes Molly a lot. Says he would like to breed to her. And says he has two males we can choose from that has a similar style that would complement hers. She was the talk of the town. And some dog men said she was their favorite out of the females they had witnessed go over the years. Molly didn't need any real aftercare. And was on heat not long after the show. I told the team about Hammer's offer and they went with Gaza as he was the son of CH Recoil Buck Imp. Not many people were getting the blood as it was only kept among a chosen few. And was obviously the flavor of the month. My personal pick was Day Walker 1XW but he didn't possess a pretty pedigree. But the guy that lost into him praised him. The Gaza and Molly happened and Molly was laid off due to thinking she was going to have pups. She was back at home during this time. It ended up a missed call. While she was home Locke grabbed the opportunity to teach her to run the slat mill. So it was decided that her weight would be put out to try. And attain the title of champion. The search was on for winners first one called out was a dog that won a match as replacement dog with barley much conditioning on her. In that show this specific dog came in on 38 pounds and seemed like she could still shed some weight according to my partners that saw her go. She was called out and now all of a sudden her weight has gone up to 41 pounds. To say the least this show was obviously never going to go down. We cut our losses and moved on. There was another 2xw on her weight. Her owner claimed that she would end up breaking Molly's jaw like she did her previous two opponents. Contact was made with the owner and he never replied. Again an attempt was made to hook the two two-time winners. But then it was said the female was too old. The other team that had a winner on Molly's weight. Was the same crew that Molly first went into. And so they were back for more. Molly two-time winner versus TSI one-time winner. Well this is how we hoped it would go down. But this was not the case. They claimed that TSI who previously won on 37 pounds could no longer make that weight. She was going to go at 36 pounds. And 6 ounces and that she can actually make 35 pounds. And 4 ounces. But nothing close to 37 or 37.5 pounds. They were however still willing to go into Molly with TSI's sister. But the catch was Molly had to move up more than half a pound for this to happen. TSI was still available to go into on their preferred weight. So if Molly wanted the winner she had to drop weight. And due to the fact that she didn't look very good her first show on a lower weight it was decided to rather move her weight up. It seemed that meeting Molly on her weight just wasn't an option. Mole ended up hooking into both sisters. With another of our dogs that they liked. Molly's keep had changed from previously being biked. To a slat mill keep. This specific slat mill was a hard pulling one and on show night the effects were clear to see if you had witnessed her second show. Dog day came and it was Molly versus cocaine females on 38 pounds and 4 ounces. Molly comes in on her normal weight and cocaine is spot on the agreed weight. She now ends up pushing more than a pound. Mr. Rock doing the honors again and gun is handling for BR. Refs orders females to be released and show is on the way. Cocaine is bred Barracuda 1xw to Amy basically a sangre m to chtdi battle cross. Cocaine has a much bigger frame than our girl. But Molly has a slight height advantage over her. Cocaine is on the attack and Molly ends up on the defense. Molly is a bit sluggish and doesn't seem to be floating as she did before. Cocaine relentless on the attack and it was clear to see that she can do damage. She goes to the front leg joint and does loads of damage. Molly never panics and just ended up sitting on her muzzle doing her thing. That leg was bitten so bad that the bones and some tendons could be seen. Molly wasn't the only one going for the muzzle. Cocaine would counter on the bottom jaw and was making damage there too. Molly was taking on way more damage than both her first two shows combined, the weight difference was clearly taking its toll. The show was tit for tat. Neither gaining an advantage over the other until around the 50 minutes mark. The face chewing started to take its toll on Cocaine as she wanted to make a run for it. A turn was granted by the ref. But Gun second was experienced. And they talked her back into the match. Molly was no longer as fresh and this time Cocaine was dishing out some more punishment. Handles made in Cocaine to scratch and she does as she has found some new confidence. Another handle. And Molly makes her scratch. Cocaine seems to have lost her confidence. And another handle made. At 1 hour 4 minutes. She is counted out and champion Molly makes her courtesy convincingly. TSI ends up being put away in 25 minutes. Losing an eye in the process and going out game. But that's a story for another day. Thanks again for listening to the Texas Scratch King channel.
please don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video. Until the next time my friends as we always say, never submit to life and keep scratching every time.